Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. Today I'm going to tell you about how I made my Iron Man suit out of foam. The foam I use to make these suits is called Plastazone foam. It's also known as EVA foam or closed cell foam. This is the same sort of foam that's used in floor mats and sometimes yoga mats. I've got two different types here, one is an LD33, which is quite low density, and the one I use for most of the work is an LD45. That means that if it was a cubic metre, it would weigh 45 kilograms, so obviously that's a UK measurement. I believe it's called L200 in the US, which is probably some amount of pounds per some imperial volume. All of the foam was cut using a sharp knife, like this one, on a cutting mat. Sometimes I used a steel ruler and sometimes I made cardboard templates to get curves. All of the angles to join the foam together were basically cut by hand by me doing this with a knife. So there's nothing really too clever about that. The templates that I used for these suits weren't made by me. These were downloaded from the internet. They're actually paper craft templates, which is also known as Pepakura, which is Japanese for paper craft. If you look at my website at xrobots.co.uk, you can find a link to where I got those in the Replica Prop Forum and also information on how to download and print them. Most people are printing these on paper, making the paper model, then reinforcing it with fiberglass and spending a very long time sanding and filling to make it smooth. I decided to make it out of foam, because foam bends uniformly without any creases, so it's much easier to build the suits up quickly. This foam can also be stretched and shaped with heat. I've got a hot air gun here, it's extremely hot and basically if you heat up the foam you can bend it in two directions at once so you can make complex curves and even without heat you can see that you can stretch it to make a kind of dome shape and that's how the uh, faceplate has been made of Iron Man so instead of having lots of slits in there to try and make a curve shape as if it was a geodesic dome or something basically it's one big piece of foam which has just been heated and bent in two directions at once I found the best method was just to heat it up from both sides and then get your knee and squash it over just like that and that makes a nice curve if you heat it and hold it in shape while it cools it will hold the shape all of the pieces of foam were stuck together with hot glue this is a hot glue gun it plugs into the mains electricity and takes glue sticks basically it melts them and as you squeeze the trigger hot glue comes out of the end molten this is extremely good to stick foam quickly because as the glue cools it sticks the piece immediately if you were to use some other solvent based type of glue then you'd have to wait for that to air dry before the pieces would be stuck properly. The first suit I made was actually War Machine from Iron Man 2. You can see this in a separate article on my website. Here are some of the pieces. I actually used the lower LD33 foam for this. That's a piece of the arm, actually it's the other arm. And this is one of the shins. So basically this foam was just painted with rattle cans, it's just spray paint. You can still see it looks quite foamy, so um, although the whole thing together looks quite good, the finish on it isn't all that good, and obviously if you uh, kind of scrape it then bits of it come off. It's black underneath which isn't too bad, but it's a far from satisfactory finish. For the gun that goes on his shoulder, if you've seen the film you know what I'm talking about, I actually just saturated the foam with more and more black paint. It still looks a bit like foam. It's a bit of a better finish and the paint stuck a lot better, but it did take an awful lot of paint. This is just foam stuck to cardboard tubes and some PVC pipe which has also been sprayed black. So basically we needed to find a better way to seal the foam to make the Iron Man suit. The method I came up with simply uses PVA glue to seal the foam before it's painted. Here's one I got in my local DIY store which was about £10 for a gallon. This is basically the same as wood glue or white glue that you'd use at school. Here's a picture of the Iron Man helmet when it was just made in foam. The next thing I did was to paint it all over with PVA. I painted about three coats of PVA on there. The last one was thinned with water to try and get rid of the brush marks. As you've seen already, I've made the entire suit. Here's the rest of the suit, all made out of foam, which is stuck together with hot glue as I described. And then it's all been sealed with PVA. PVA dries transparent, so you can see the suit is slightly glossy, but it's still black in colour. The next thing is to get some colour on, but there's a couple of other coats that need to go on first. The PVA makes the piece a lot more rigid, but it will still flex, and if you flex it too much it will crack the paint. After some trial and error, I found the best thing to paint over the PVA was Plasti Dip. 
This is comes in a spray or brush on format and it is basically a solvent based brushable or sprayable rubber. It's incredibly toxic in liquid form so you should wear a respirator to use this. After the plastic dip I use plastic primer. I got this one from my local auto store, this is just a grey primer. I've got a piece here which has had the PVA, the Plasti Dip, and also the grey primer, primer applied to it. You can see it's still quite flexible, and uh, although I won't bend it too much because it will crack, this is one of Iron Man's hand plates. But it's made kind of a nice primed, fairly rigid piece. It's extremely lightweight, whoops, because it's made of foam, and that's primed up in plastic primer so it's useful for putting the colour on. The next thing is normal rattle cans of whichever colour you like. It's probably best to use the uh, same paint that goes with the primer. So these ones are from Halfords in the UK. But I've also got a Holtz Duplicolor paint which seemed to work perfectly well and was in fact what I sprayed all of the suit with. Some of the details of the suit are quite hard to make out of foam. Specifically the ears on Iron Man's helmet. It would be quite hard to get a good contour and get the groove cut out of foam without making a mess of it. So for these pieces I sculpted them in clay, made these silicon moulds, this is also for the shoulder bell pivot, I did the same thing with that one, and that's for the ear, and then I cast them in plastic. Here's a picture of the clay sculpt, and for the shoulder pivot I made a piece from the bottom of a tin can and the top of a wine bottle cap. Glued these together, put them into a box, and primed them, then poured on silicon moulding compound. Once the silicon was cured, I then moulded them in polyurethane fast cast plastic. Each ear mould produced both ears, and then I used the shoulder bell pivot mould to produce all four shoulder bell pivots. These were just stuck onto the rest of the helmet with hot glue, and then they were sealed and primed and painted in the same way as the rest of the helmet. The next part of the project is to make moulds from all the foam pieces, and then cast them in rigid material. I'm halfway through doing this already, which is what this suit is to my left. Watch out for the next video where I show you all about how I did the moulding and casting. See you next time. Bye.